and this is the third video in my series on creating and drawing tags in VT Skater version 11. Now in the first two videos, we saw how to create the tags for the communication chain and the I.O. for four motors attached to my PLC system. It's time to add an alarm to our system. Now I'm going to show you in this video how to create an alarm tag and also how to configure a built-in alarm for a tag such as the digital status. So back to the computer. Oh, and I'm also going to show you how to do the work once. So we'll create one alarm tag for one motor, and then with a one click of a button, all four motors are going to have alarms built into them. Continuing from where we left in the second video, I now have a context called Motor1 that controls, contains my two I.O. tags, the digital control and the digital status. Now, looking back at my tag table, I see that I also have fault monitoring on this address. So what I'm going to need, it's a digital tag that's going to monitor that address to notice when a fault comes in. So we'll start by adding that to motor one. Brand new child of type digital status. And we'll call it fault monitor. And this will be the monitor fault status for the description. In the I.O., the address is going to need to be 14005. However, I'm going to add a snapshot expression, the same as I did for the previous two tags. And this will be backslash motor number, the property that was built into the parent context tag, plus, well, looking at my list, if I add 14004, that should work with each motor number to give me the correct address. The field turns blue. If I hover over it, the expression shows me what I typed, and I can see that I do have the address that I want to use. Now, at this point, I have two options for adding my alarm tag. I can click on OK, and then add a brand new tag of type alarm to the motor. Let's run through that process just to see what's in an alarm tag. So first off, an alarm tag being a tag needs to have a name. So this will be the fault alarm. It's going to be triggered by, well, I need to choose what tag it will watch. So I set my option to tag and then use this link to a tag browser again where I can choose the fault monitor, the digital status. So triggered by is going to watch, in this case, another tag. That will be triggered when that tag becomes equal to the set point of one, which makes sense with a digital status alarm fault. If I were setting up an analog value, say we had, we're going to have an alarm, which is going to match a level so that when that a level goes past 80% full, perhaps, what I would want to use is a function, perhaps greater than or greater than equal. With an analog, it's seldom exactly to eight decimal points equal to anything. So much better to use a threshold, either greater than or less than, and then set the threshold value for the set point. Notice again, I've got the option of using expression or another tag. So I could create a situation where I've got some sort of an analog control that allows an operator to set a changing set point to watch for. In this case, we're monitoring a simple digital, so a set point that's a constant one is going to make sense. Two more features within the trigger. The dead band, especially useful with an analog. Perhaps there is a little bit of noise in the system, or if I'm watching a tank, there's a, it's a ripple that's causing a, a slight fluctuation of value just around my set point. By adding a dead band, the set point would remain where I set it. So if I was had a level above 80%, it's still going to trigger at 80%. But if there was a ripple causing that value to drop below 80% and then back above and then below, below again and back above, the dead band will dampen that out, so the level has to fall by at least the value of the dead band, 
before I consider that the alarm is no longer in an active state and that any new value hitting 80% would be a fresh alarm. That doesn't apply to my digital. The other option is a delay. I can say that well, if I have spikes in value, transients, if I set a delay of one second, my alarm trigger has to go to that state and remain there for at least one second before I will consider that this is a real alarm and not just some sort of transient spike in the, uh, the system. Finally, on the Actions tab, several things. First off, I have the ability to disarm the alarm. Now that is sometimes tied in with a tag value, and I would need to create some sort of a digital control tag, but that would allow operators to shut down specific alarms that are tied to this, perhaps for system maintenance. The alarm rearm time, set to one hour by default, if I enable this by clicking the alarm rearm enable, what's going to happen is that if the operator doesn't fix the underlying trigger and the trigger remains active for this length of time, even though they acknowledge the alarm, the lights and the sirens will go off again and they will have to acknowledge the alarm again. So it's a reminder to deal with the underlying situation and not just simply acknowledge the alarm. The ability to shelve an alarm is a new feature in 11.1. .1. It is not present in 11.0. Shelving is one step shy of disabling an alarm, where a shelved alarm will still be recorded in the alarm history. And if you have a tag drawing method that blinks in an alarm condition, well, that will continue to blink. But otherwise, all other alarm notifications will be disabled. Nothing will go out to rem a remote operator if you have the dial-up uh, alarm notification system. And a shelved alarm does not ever need to be acknowledged, but it does still get recorded in the history. Finally, trip, relevant only with a digital, a trip alarm has no active status. Now, if you need an active status, and if that matters, don't use a trip. But if you have an alarm where if it's tripped, it needs to be acknowledged, but it's not relevant whether or not it still remains in an active state, trip is designed for that type of alarm. Finally, the priority allows me to set what level of alarm this is. Critical and high both work with the alarm notification system, if you have that as part of your license, to send a notice out to a remote operator. Warning and notice will show up on the screen but not be dialed out. And finally, event will show up in the alarm history, but there are no notifications at all for an event level alarm. Let's leave that as critical. Now, before I click OK and create this alarm, I'm going to cancel this. And since I'm monitoring this with a digital status tag, everything you just saw within the alarm tag can be done within the digital status by going to the alarm setup. Here I can choose the alarm priority, the state that trips that alarm, if there's going to be a delay, a dead band does not apply to a digital, so it does not show up here. I can have a rearm time and enable that. I can shelve it and, oh, watch out. It's disabled by default, so I'm gonna take that away. And I now have my alarm. Everything that was in the alarm tag that related to a digital can be done here. Clicking OK, and I now have something that will monitor for a fault, and clicking a button on my, uh, my demonstration box, I can throw this into an alarm state and I see that I go into an alarm, the lights start blinking, so we have something that works. Now, finally, this was done within only one of my tags. But notice the plus sign. This tag was added explicitly and only to this one motor. If I right click and then redefine the parent type. It's going to redefine all instances of that type. And now all of my motors have a fault monitor. And remember we used a snapshot expression within 
the configuration of the address. So if I take a look at one of these, I'll see it's watching the next address. Everything was configured automatically.